The pre-talk is the most important part of your business. A friend who used to sell flooring once told me, men are like linoleum floors. <laughs> you lay them right the very first time, and you can walk all over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if your session fails, it's because you've got a terrible pre-talk. And it is amazing to me that in most businesses, they put the lowest paying individual in customer service. Bad idea. You've got to set your client right, or you don't have a client. Long time ago, I used to do training for a client who is a school food service business that feeds 60,000 children every day. So it's not a small business. So I'm doing leadership training with the cafeteria managers. And I showed them on the slide how much it would cost if a cafeteria lady scares a kindergartner on first day of school. You know, cafeteria ladies with the nets very scary. Looking over a little child, that child who's been traumatized that first day in the cafeteria will never eat at the cafeteria again. Multiply the number of years, times the number of school days, times the cost of that meal, and I showed them it costs more than their annual salary. So I said, if you scare a child, you can pick up and go home. You are so fired. <laughs> <laughs> so in a traditional hypnotic model, they usually tell you that the pre-talk is when you are seeing the client in your office yet. You think? How many of you think pre-talk is when the client's in your office? So when does pre-talk begin? All right, they tell us sex begins in the kitchen. Yeah. Women, we know. You know, the guy piss you off all day long and they, the husband comes home and you mad at each other the whole day and you think when you get into bed you're all going to be hunky-dory. Not going to happen. That the beginning in the, it's all about preparation, 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 same thing as you do good sex, it's all in the whole play. Same thing as you do good stir fry, it's all in the preparation. Once you get to the walk, it's over in minutes. The moment an interested party engages you, it is crucial when you hang up the phone, you have booked a client, yes? Yeah. That is what I call a crucial conversation. The pre-talk is the crucial conversation that converts an interested party into a client. A client, by definition, is somebody who pays you for service. So I tell the client, if you like an appointment, an appointment is confirmed with payment now. And here is my policy. Once I confirm an appointment with you, you pay up front. And if you don't show, be a very nice lunch at my hourly rate. If you are late, after 15 minutes, you won't see me in the office. That means your session is over. If you are late 14 and a half minutes, you get the remaining time. I'm not going to give you back the time that you had wasted of mine. That's my policy. So. Two parts in the pre-talk. Crucial meaning if you don't do it right, you're going to get mushy stir fry or you're going to get unsatisfied sex. And worse still, you get no money. <laughs> All right, so the first part of the pre-talk is very important. How do you convert an interested party into giving you the money and saying, thank you, sir, I will see you at the appointed time. I said, please be here five minutes before your appointed time. Take your shoes off and be comfortable. Friend said, what if they don't take their shoes off? I said, if they don't trust me with the soles of their shoes, 
How are they going to trust me with their souls? S O U L S. That's my first screen. Okay. So the second part is setting the client right, so that when you actually do the session, they are going to walk away feeling successful. How many of you ask the client, how do you know if you have a successful session with me? How do you say that? What is your desired outcome? What can I help you with? What is your desired outcome? What Very do you good. want from this What do you day? want? So write down, what do you want? So simple, right? Yet many people do not ask the question. So the most important thing is, before you get into your chatter pattern, listen. So first step to good communication is listen, listen, listen to the client. What do you want? How can I help you? Now don't turn the first phone call into a phone session. Okay, it's a fine line. You give away your services for free, it means you won't get paid. And if you don't pay the power company, you're going to get darkness in your office. <coughs> don't want that to happen. All right? So listen first for what the client wants. My first question to client, they pick up the phone, and I would say, good morning. This is Eye Health Center for Integrated Wellness. Here's talking to Dr. Tui Tai. How can I help you? Very specific. Identify your business. So they don't they know they're not talking to AT and T. <laughs> right? And who you are. And the next question is how can I help you? How can I help you? So the client would say something. Who wants to be client today? Okay, Denise. Alright, you can see where you are, just talk about it. Right. Alright. Ring ring, good morning. Good morning. Um, I uh, wanted to find out about some hypnosis. May I ask what your name is, ma'am? My name is Denise. Hello, Denise. May I call you Denise? Yes. I usually ask for last name and I... What's your last name? Hall. Hall. If they don't give me a last name, I will not call them by first name. This is very important. I want to maintain a professional boundary. All right, just like used car salesmen, they'll call you, hey, Jody. Yeah. If you get too friendly with them, the boundary of therapist and client becomes muddy. So, all right, Miss Denise, this is Dr. Kuitai, and yes, I do address myself as Dr. Kuitai because that's my brand. I tell my friends, call me Kuitai in private, when you're referring to me, say, I had lunch with Dr. Kui Tai today. It is a language and a professional barrier we maintain. All right. Hello, Ms. Denise, this is Dr. Kui Tai. How did you find me? Write down that question. Um, well, uh, I uh, have a friend who has seen you and she talked very highly of you. Oh, very good clue, right? already a referral. So I also sometimes if they say, oh, I found it in the phone book, uh, my friend told me about, and my next question is, did you have an opportunity to visit our website? Website. All right, if you don't have a lot of money to spend on marketing, please spend every penny you have, sell your, sell your favorite jacket if you have to. Anybody can put text in a template, even your dog can do it. <laughs> True? So there are many designers who say, oh, I can do your website for 20 bucks an hour, you get what you paid for. There is a special art and skill in matching content with representing who you are that drives the client. That is another pre-talk, is your website. So I, we have a very extensive website designed to do exactly that. So it saves me a lot of time to explain my work. So I would say, if you have not visited our website, may I please direct you to the website if you have a moment today? 
Go ahead, spend 30 minutes on my website. If you still want to talk to me, call me back. If after you read my website and you don't like me, you don't have to call back and I don't have to waste my time talking to you and working with other clients. If after you read my website, you like my credentials, you like the work I do, you've seen the video testimonials of my clients, that's already done the pre-talk for me, you already, ah, oh, I want some of that. Okay, so let's say if the client has not done so and then read the website and calls me again. So I said, well, good, you have read my website, particularly the section on clinical hypnotherapy. So you've read the testimonials, you've listened, you've seen my video, videos on the YouTube. Now what can I do for you? It helps the client focus on what, is, what it is she really wants. Save a lot of time, pre-talk on the website. Imagine that. All right, now the next thing is, you want to hone your listening skills. You want to listen for what she is telling you and what she's not telling you. Most people are very inarticulate in expressing how they feel. Okay, so I tell people when I'm working with clients, 10% of my energy is focusing on listening to what you're telling me when you're telling me. 90% of my energy is focused on what you're not telling me when you're telling me what you're telling me. I'm looking for micro expressions on your face. Ever seen Paul Ekman's work? Or the series on, on Netflix called Lie to Me? Go read all his books. Uh, psychologists have done a lot of studies on non verbal language, facial expressions. That's just a fix. What about the body? I'm fine. So, the good thing is all of us here are sighted hypnotherapists and use your vision. All right, I also have a colleague who's a blind hypnotherapist, but perhaps he's more attuned to listening to subtle shifts in voice and energy that we are not trained to do because we are sighted. But if we have the sense of sight, then please open your eyes and look at subtle verbal cues in the client. There's a piece here, some of you may do, some of you don't. I am a practitioner of energy medicine. I read energies. And I know, even if you're non-verbals, if you're well-trained, I have a friend who's a trained Navy SEAL, he can pass all the polygraph tests. Trained to lie. But your energies don't lie. The next thing is, Notice the difference between the word reaction and the word respond. Sometimes hypnotherapists may not be very grounded at that time or on that day, or something has flustered you, and a client says something that triggers some emotional fear in you, and you react. Reaction is always a bad idea. Right? because it's primal. We need a sense of decorum, right? If you normally use a lot of foul language, it's not professional to use foul language. If you want people to treat you as a professional, and then you go suddenly something exciting, you're talking with the client, you go, oh, blankety blank. Now there is a context where if you are using a particular word that may not be normally socially acceptable, but it is germane to the conversation with the client in private space. You want to caveat that. I say, quote, unquote, you say the word, and it's okay. So when we are scared, we react. If I slap you, you slap me back. Although if you know me, you wouldn't dare try to slap me back because it would cost you more. <laughs> right? But a but normal reaction, I go over there and I deliberately stomp on your feet. What are you going to do? You're going to react. You're human, right? Response require us to filter. So the words we use with our clients 
or soon to be our clients, must be measured, must be deliberate, and it has to be professional so that you will elicit trust. It's all about building trust, right? This is the beginning of the getting to know you, right? Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm bright and breezy because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you day by day. In, in this case, moment to moment, people don't care how smart you are. People don't care how great you are. People only care that you care about them. People care that you care about them. <coughs> Disclosure is the first step to intimacy. Sharing a little bit about who I am. Look, I don't have horns and I don't have a tail. How do you want to be perceived by your client? Everything about you is pre-talk. Everything about your office space is pre-talk. Everything you say and every expression you give is pre-talk. It's all about establishing a layer of trust because the individual is about to come in your office and share, and I'm going to use the female pronoun because the word he is in the word she, gentlemen, I'm just being inclusive. Because in order for someone to trust you, to bear her soul to you, she has to feel safe with you. What about you? So this is a question to take home. What about your person elicits trust in your heart? Right? I'm going to tell you something very basic. Personal hygiene is the first step. Good health has a lot to do with personal hygiene. Don't be coughing three times before you can finish a sentence. And don't be having bad breath. There are such things as bread mints, for goodness sakes, or brush your teeth and rinse your mouth. And please, if you sweat a lot, there is such thing called deodorant. You are going to be in a very, and ladies, don't use a lot of perfume. Do not use perfume at all. Because many people are sensitive to scents and fragrances. Don't be having lots of incense all over the place. We are not doing voodoo today. All right? So candles, and, and I do not use music, folks. Some people like to use music. I do not use music. I want my client to go where she needs to go. I do not need to preempt her journey. So people don't come to you because you've got long lines of credentials, although some do. I do have a long line of credentials. But people come to me, people come to you because there is something about you uniquely that resonates with what they need from you. Each one of you will attract into your practice clients who resonate with you. Perhaps you have recovered from a personal trauma similar to what the client is seeking. My gosh, he's crossed the bridge, he's gone to the other side. He knows how to lead me across on the bridge. Right? So, look within yourself. What about me is the pre-talk? What about my space that adds to the pre-talk? How do I answer the phone? My voice the speed with which I speak, the sincerity I exude as I am speaking to the client. And our data shows this is what may need 
all right? To feel safe. They have to have trust. They have to have, have, well, just go in the locker room, guys, all right? You are competitive. You like each other's approval. But I want you to pay attention to the word validation. Research has flushed this out. I'm not going to do citations. I'm not. Women like to feel loved. Women like to have people understand. That's why we have girlfriends. You piss off one woman client, she's going to make 10 phone calls to girlfriends and bitch about you. <laughs> and now it's worse, it's Facebook. And Google is forever. There's a slight difference between men and women. Of course, I'm a woman. I'm going to tell you we are perfect ladies. We have XX chromosomes. The guys, they're missing one piece. <laughs> That's why they need us. You know why Chinese women walk two steps be behind their men? Because we have to pick them up when they fall. <laughs> and we love them. So let's look at the universal needs of people. People need to feel loved. I don't suggest that you all go out and fall in love romantically with your clients. But people need to feel a sense of acceptance. Right? You don't have to agree with them. Now, the important thing, people need to feel a sense of trust. They need to know that you somehow trust them to be telling the truth, even though they're lying through their teeth. Because they need to feel that you're on their side. Right? They also need to know that you are trustworthy. If I'm going to tell you a dirty little secret, you're not going to turn around after the session and post it on Facebook and say, oh, Kui Thai, blah, blah, blah. Because once it's out, you can retract it all you want, but you cannot retract emotional damage. Write this down, you cannot retract emotional damage. And we all need to be respected, all right? So ask yourself, what is it about all the other parameters of pre-talk that elicit respect from my client, all right? If you show up in your pajamas, you're not going to get much respect. If you, bottom line, if you can get an individual to trust you, if you can get an individual to feel safe with you, you've got yourself a client, folks, and you can name your price. So here's the, here's the one skill I want to share with you. People like to feel that you see them. I have worked with a lot of clients who come into my office who say, I feel invisible. My children don't see me. My parents don't see me. My spouse does not see me. He doesn't hear what I have to say. She does not listen to anything I have to say. That sense of feeling invisible is one of humankind's biggest fear, the fear of being unloved. Again, you know, it gets to be the bad country western song. When you feel very unloved, I lose my house, I lose my spouse, I lose my dog, I lose my horse, I lose my whiskey, and I'm the lonely, homeless person in the street and there is no one to love me. Bottom line, all of your clients come to you because they want you to rescue you from the bad country western song. Isn't that true? So we want to validate our client and we want to make them feel safe. So you have to sometimes and more times than not, a client calls you and sort of kind of know I want your help, but I really don't know exactly what I want. I just want to be happy. All right? Two things they come for. Either to get away from the present situation or get to a better situation, and usually it's both. They want to change from the moment. Take me out of this box. Very important. 
do what it takes, take all the time you need to get to helping the client feel safe with you, helping the client trust you, then you want to help them find out what is one thing you want to take home with you today. Person comes to you and say, I have this horrible pain in my hips. So I said, can you quantify the pain? 10 is you will not be sitting here, you'll be standing up screaming blue murder. Zero is when everything is hunky-dory for you. Give me a number. Most people can figure out a number. So you are at a seven. If at the end of this session you get it down to a six, would that be acceptable to you? And if at the end of the day they say it's a four, I said, wow, well done. You did so well. You were shooting for a six and now you're four. You're 300% ahead of your goal. How exciting is that? They may want to give you a bonus a tip. Okay. <laughs> right, so tell them up front what you're going to do. Right? I'm not going to do voodoo magic. And they say, will, I quack, will you make me quack like a duck? My response is, that will cost you extra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell them up front what you're going to do with them. And get to the point. This is hypnosis. This is not voodoo magic. Right? If you have no feet, I can't make you walk out of here. I can care before you share. Do whatever it takes to convey a deep sense of sincerity that you are doing sacred work, that you are doing professional work, and you're there to help them whatever it takes. But that's why it's very important you draw a professional boundary, particularly men. If you're working with female clients, you're in a very close, intimate space. Do not allow for any chance of impropriety. That means you've got to check your own compass. Make sure your intentions are honorable and professional. I have worked with a lot of men in very close space, but there's never been any improper line. And it is sometimes possible that your client might experience a sense of transference. They may fall in love with you. It has happened to me and they tell me, and I said, that's very flattering, but no, you're not in love with me. You're in love with the idea I represent in your mind. Go find another physical form. Not this one. <laughs> okay. In order to validate a person, develop very good active listening skills. Paraphrase, how do you know that I'm listening to you? So you want to say, oh, I hear that you have this pain in your lower left side for the last five years. It's okay to paraphrase and validate those slides. What I want to do is have you decide how you want to do your pre-talk. What do you hope? When a person calls you, all right, you want to make sure the next time you talk to this person, she's in your office. You want to make sure you want to close the deal. Right? Talk is cheap. That's why I don't take appointments without full payment. How many of you have waited in the office for a client who hasn't paid and they're late and they don't show up? Doesn't it feel like you're a piece of used toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> it stinks, doesn't it? It's devaluing, it's demoralizing, you're wasting my time, you feel worthless, you're disrespecting me. You're lying to me, you said you'd come and you didn't come. It doesn't matter if it's a client or a friend or a spouse or a lover. To be late is a lie. To be late is disrespectful. Then the next part of the pre-talk is very important, is the hypnosis education. How many of you have, you have experienced clients who come back and say, I don't feel I've been hypnotized. How many, how many of you have experienced that? Okay, I hope that was a long time ago. If it is recent, it will never happen again after this. 
Alright? You have to flush out. Have you ever been hypnotized before? If you had, would you tell me what your experience is? Now they say, oh, I went to this hypnotist and he was blah, blah, blah. Do not jump in the bandwagon of bad mouthing as Holly. Very important. I don't know how she does her work. And it's unfortunate you didn't have a good experience. But know that what I'm about to do with you today is very different. That is the truth. Because nobody does it like you. All right? Then you go into educating, and she said, I didn't feel like I was asleep, I could hear everything in the room. And I said, well, that is part of the hypnotic trance. Let me explain to you. Now you go into your hypnosis education. Hypnosis is not sleep. It is a natural state of consciousness. It's much like when you're about to wake up from your sleep and so on and so forth. So now you do that right, and you reset. <laughs> So then you give them expectations. Know that when you are in trance, you're not asleep, you're fully aware. In fact, you will hear things more clearly. You'll be able to imagine things in your mind more clearly than you've ever been. And you may be in a different place, in a different time, and yet at the same time, you feel like you are having this conversation with me. In hypnosis, we call it dual, rea dual consciousness or dual reality, which means you're doing fine. Okay, so some people are trained to let to do a lot of talking when you're doing the, the, the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing this. I don't do that. I like to talk to the client. <laughs> Tell me what you experience now. Oh, you're doing a great job. You're doing exactly what you're doing now. Oh, but but I'm on top of a mountain. I said, that's fine. You're doing just fine. They need reassurance because they don't know what they're doing. You're supposed to be their guide. What are you doing? <laughs> so don't, don't do all the talking but ask questions. What do they want and listen for their nonverbal language as well as their verbal language. Okay. And then at the end of the phone call, now you don't do the hypnosis education on the phone or sometimes you might have to, that's your call. For me, my first phone call can take 20 minutes. But then when I close a deal, it's either a $7,000 check or a $10,000 check before they show up in my office. It's worth my 20 minutes. If you're charging $100 for the session and you spend 20 minutes talking to them and not get paid, it's bad math. I'm Chinese and I'm very good at math. <laughs> right? You want, you have to decide whether you're in the business or you're in the hobby. <laughs> hobby is when you pay to play. That's why people go to golf courses and pay thousands of dollars to be a member and pay lots of money to just hit a little ball around the grass. That's called a hobby. But if you're doing this seriously, do a good job, expect to be paid. 